2020 for me was a really hard year, like it was for a lot of people. I actually quit my full-time job at the end of 2019 and I actually was gonna start a business that could not exist with COVID in the picture. That was pretty devastating. I started looking for a job and what happened then was it took almost seven months to get a job and it was a dark time for me. What really got me through that time was being able to go mountain bike. It's just like the one thing where you can actually stop thinking about everything else. When I first heard about the Level 100, I was like, there's no way I could ever mountain bike 100 miles, let alone do 12,000, 13,000 feet of climbing in a day. Like that just sounded insane to me. And I think when I first heard about it, my longest ride was, I don't know, 25, 30 miles. I think I looked at it as a challenge of how do I teach myself how to train for this. And because I was unemployed, I definitely didn't have access to like a coach or anything like that. So it was like, how do I use what I have here? And just my own ability and determination to get myself across the finish line. So at the beginning of 2021, I started feeling really good. I'd also signed up for the Silver Rush 50 as a race to use really as training. Then around end of March, I went over the handlebars and I tore a ligament in my thumb that required surgery. The outcome of that was three to four months off the bike. Timeline wise, that meant I wouldn't be on a bike again outside until July. And Leadville 100 was in August. I was in a cast from my thumb all the way up to my elbow. So I was forced to ride the indoor trainer. I briefly felt hopeless, <laughs> but I was able to quickly look at the situation and spin it positively. So I spun it into this opportunity like, okay, well, I'm gonna double down on this structure training and see where that can get me. <laughs> at my three month appointment, which was 12 days before Silver Rush, I told him about this 50 mile race I was supposed to be doing. And the surgeon looked at me and said, isn't that how you hurt yourself to begin with? And he told me, I don't think you should do this. So I cried the entire way home. And then the next day I went and rode my mountain bike. And then the day after that, I rode my mountain bike. And by the third day, I was like, okay, we're gonna do Silver Rush. I went into the 50 with no expectations. And I was just looking at it as a day of training and I just wanted to go out and have fun and be grateful to be back on my mountain bike outside. The Silver Rush 50 is an out and back. And when I was coming down the first descent after the turnaround point, all these people started yelling at me, first female, first female. And I actually laughed out loud because I was in such shock. So when I started to believe I could win it, I immediately started thinking about everything I had gone through leading up to this, and it just felt like the biggest reward for overcoming all of these struggles. It definitely improved my confidence, and I felt I had this huge opportunity to use the next five weeks to go harder and trust my abilities. It's easy to be intimidated by all these pros that have all these resources, and it's easy to say like, I'm not good enough to compete with them, but I feel like maybe I'm ready to challenge that perception. My goal for Leadville was to finish under nine hours and it was really a competition against myself. I thought I could do this. It would be really, really hard, but it felt achievable. I was able to go under nine hours and, you know, I finished 16th in a field with 24 pro women and was shocked by it, but 
it's, it's possible and you don't know how hard you can push yourself until you put yourself out there and take the risk. I think it's okay to allow yourself to go through challenges and feel down about them, but keep an eye on those positive things that are happening and let them fuel your determination to keep going. Go girl. She's a fucking beast. She's just a beast, guys. Cowboy.